What's happening guys? I'm Dan. Welcome back to another episode of Poor Michigan Beer Guys, but this time today we are working with a Chicago classic guys. This is Revolution Brewing Company. This is the Cafe Death or Deeth. I've heard it heard or I've heard it called uh, one and the other, so I don't know which one it is, but it usually was called Cof Cafe Death. Um, let's go with Cafe Deeth because I heard a guy from Chicago say it, so it makes more sense that it's Deeth because he says it that way. Um, anyways, guys, this is a long-awaited release every single year. Um, we're looking for this monster, guys. It's 14.8%. We've all heard of this one. We all know who Revolution is. Um, and this is kind of the series that gets you hyped up. It's kind of like Bourbon County from Goose Island. It just gets you hyped, guys, for the wintertime. You just look for these, and they're highly sought-after items. Um, and why wouldn't they be? So, again, it's a weaponized quantity of freshly roasted whole bean uh, coffee from Independent Chicago Roasters. Um, this is the um, kind of coffee version of uh, Deeth's Tar, guys. So uh, coffee aromatics with, uh, without overshadowing the base beer on the palate. Pair with rich food or enjoy on its own. Keep cold. Enjoy now. We mean it. So, guys, I like having things that are warm and cellared. Um, so this is another four-pack of that. Four pack of both, so I'm I've got a great collection going of these. Gonna hold them and sell them for the future. This one was cold from the Deep Wood series, guys. This Cafe Deeth is cold, um, and and I usually do not drink them cold, but I think I, I was looking for a difference in taste, and I just want to check this out as it warms up. It's been out of the fridge for about 25 minutes, but still cold, and that's not something I normally do. Let's check it out. <sighs> Murky midnight oil, guys. Pouring a thick, sludgy, black. This is one to be shared. Um, again, don't be like me. You guys that are watching me on YouTube right now, don't be like me. Don't don't drink a 15% beer to yourself. You end up feeling some type of way the next day, if, especially if you've had other beers. Um, <clears throat> but guys, midnight, black, darkness, oily when it pours, thick, viscous, um, dark, mocha, chocolatey, uh, brownish, brownish head, I would say, and, and it's it's not thick, it's not tightly compacted, but uh, I expect this to dissipate 15%. Um, I think the last time I had one of these was in 2018, um, or 2019, I guess it could have been last year, but I think 2018 is the last one I had, guys, so been a very long time. I had it on tap at Seven Monks, um, and there that head goes, by the way, guys, it's just, it's, it's going away, so... Um, again, this is this is dark as night, and that's what you're expecting with this 14.8% monster um, oatmeal kind of stout. So this is barrel age, guys. I'm looking for a barrel. It is it is cold still, but let's go to an aroma and check this out. Whew, yeah, that is that dark, raisiny, uh, um, oily coffee bourbon barrel mixture it's it's tar like it's it's campfire roasty it's it's wow that's a great that's a great first nose there's that coffee bean kind of espresso coming out but it literally just you pour out coffee beans all in front of your face you're smelling those they're coming out in a deep deep way Yeah, it's it's just more of that dark kind of roasty coffee, um, kind of fig like. <clears throat> that's coming out this fig kind of raisiny thing. Uh, again, that campfire kind of marshmallowy vibe coming off the top as well with that. Um, boy, guys, it just it smells like a winner. Um, <laughs> I'm ready for it. Let's check it out, guys. It's my first one in a couple of years. It's Cafe Deeth. Let's check it out from Revolution. Mm. Huh. Yeah. So it's cold, guys. Um, big, big, heavy mouthfeel. Thick, oily, viscous, dense, marshmallowy, creamy mouthfeel, coupled with this campfire, um, leather, tobacco y thing. Um, deep, deep, rich coffee beans coming out. Nice, milky, dark chocolate combination. Oh, it's, it's fantastic, guys. Kind of a syrupy, honey 
kind of vibe underneath too. It's kind of underneath those other uh, factors. Mm. God, that's so good. It's sweet. Very sweet. Decently finishes towards the drier end, but still the, the majority of this drink is sweet, guys. Very thick and syrupy, oily, again. Um, it reminds me of Black Note from Bell's. It's, it's this figgy raisin thing. Um, it comes out so, so nicely, uh, and it pairs so well, that sweetness with that bourbon barrel char on that back end, guys. And it's got that heat, even with this being cold and relatively uh, fresh out of the uh, the fridge, really. But it's warmed up a bit. This only gets better as it warms up. I wanted to taste it cold, because I wanted to see how smooth this is. It's got that kind of like weedy um, oatmeal kind of vibe that just, it, it just smooths this whole beer out from front to back. That sweetness is kind of covered up with the bourbon barrel char. You're getting these dark chocolate notes. Some of that bitterness, but it leans more towards the milk chocolate end, guys. Again, coffee beans and espresso notes coming out, just slapping you around. And then you run back into this marshmallowy, kind of leathery tobacco vibe. Um, and, and the bourbon barrel's just enough to let you know, hey, I'm here, I've been used, and you're about to get hit with some high ABV, guys. But it goes down like butter. It's just a fantastic, world-class uh, bourbon barrel aged stout, guys. It is just next level. It reminds you of that Bourbon County kind of vibe. Almost a thicker, denser kind of feel to it. A little bit more creaminess to it. Not as fudgy. Um, a little bit more coffee mixture. The barrel slaps you around a little bit, guys. This is just fantastic front to back. I don't know how anybody could complain about this. If you're looking for a big-bodied stout, look no further, guys. This is it with a little coffee. Mm. I can't explain to you how well this is going down. I mean, it's smooth as butter, guys. Uh, for how thick and motor oily this beer is, this is one to share with people. Again, don't be like me, um, but if, if we're going to talk about rating, guys, let's talk about it. Only gets better as it warms up, too. That's the best part of this beer. It's so complex. There's so many other layers you can start to peel back, um, but if you're just going off of right now, even cold, I know that hides some of the flavor, but you can just tell that this is fan freaking tastic guys. Rating. Still love that marshmallowy kind of um, oatmeal vibe that comes out with this, guys. Makes it so smooth. Um, 4.79 out of 5. It's literally one of the best you're ever going to get. Uh, lives up to the hype, guys. I think it's up there with the top-notch Bourbon County brand stouts. Um, kind of expedition stout bourbon barrel age from Bell's. It's up there, guys. It, it might be one of the best. It could be the best, but for me, I'm just going to put it as it is one of the best. Nonetheless, guys, and, and don't ever forget that about Revolution. These beers are unbelievably good. Um, 4.79 out of 5, guys. Let these warm up. Drink them. Uh, uh, age them. Do whatever you want to do. They're going to be good now or later. Does not matter. One of the best beers you're ever going to have, guys. It's been another episode of Poor Michigan Beer. I thank you guys so much for joining me. If you had this, what do you think about it? What is something different from the 2020 than the 2019 or the 2018? You guys let me know. I don't drink them enough. Um, this is one expensive beer, so if you're going to get it, guys, make sure you enjoy it. I'm Dan. I'm over and out. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.